Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> week at this time, from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, times like these call for real thrift. Yes, we must save money to buy defense bonds, to help in any way we can. But we must be careful to economize wisely, especially when we economize on food, because the health and well-being that comes from nourishing food are vitally important, too. That's why delicious parquet margarine, the modern margarine made by Kraft, is a good thing to know about these days. First, parquet is so good-tasting, your family will want to spread it thick on toast, hot rolls, and bread. And parquet margarine is an economical source of food values important to a balanced diet. Parquet is a wholesome, nourishing food, one of the best sources of food energy there is. What's more, serving your family parquet margarine is a dependable way to give them vitamin A because every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. So why not start serving parquet margarine tomorrow? It's perfectly delicious for table use and for baking and pan frying too. Yes, you can economize wisely without sacrificing nourishment or flavor if you use parquet, spelled (laughs) P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who has, as you know, a nephew named Leroy, who has, as you probably don't know, four rabbits, named respectively Eeny, Meeny, Miney, and possibly Moe. Right now, they are preparing to go to Fairview, where Leroy is to represent his school at the Junior Rabbit Breeder Show, and all six of them are quite hopped up about the trip. Now, take it easy, Leroy. Just be calm, like me. No use getting all excited about this. Not at all. Where's my briefcase? Under your arm, Unc. What? Oh, oh, yes. How did it ever get there? Uh, now, about my suitcase. Uh, handkerchiefs, socks. Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gilsey? Uh, never mind. I found him. Found what, Mr. Gilsey? His socks. Well, where found them? I found him. Well, why shouldn't you? They're right there all the time. Yes, yes, I know. He found them. Then why call me? Because I couldn't find him. But I thought you said... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, my goodness, anybody would think we'd never gone any place before. Well, it's pretty exciting for me, Uncle Mort. Baby, 300 miles. Jeepers. Leroy, you talk like you'd been chained up in the coal cellar all your life. <laughs> Didn't you fly to California and back last year? Well, sure, Unc. Yes, son. We automotored all over the 47 states two years ago. There are 48 states, Bertie. Yes, I know that. But when we was in Florida, they never heard of California. And when we was in California, the vice was personal. <laughs> Well, anyway, Leroy, you've done a great deal of traveling for a boy your age, and another 300 miles shouldn't mean any more than going down to the corner on Saturday morning for the Sunday morning papers. But creepers, Uncle Mort, we're going on the train. I've never been on a train. Oh, my goodness, modern youth. Why, when I was just a baby, I can't seem to find my military brushes. (laughs) Where are they, Bertie? I put them in your happy rock bag, Mr. Gilsleeve. In my what? Bertie, could you perchance mean Gladstone bag? Yeah, that's it. Yes, happy rock. Well, I guess that's everything. Wait a minute. Uh, Leroy. Yes, Uncle? uh, Did you mail that letter I gave you last night? Uh, Which letter? Oh, well, yes, of course I did. Uh, Good. It was to Cousin Flora, telling her and her husband we're coming to stay with them while we're in Fairview. <laughs> Won't they be surprised? Why? <laughs> Why, Uncle Mort? Well, because it's an answer to a letter they sent fishing around for an invitation to visit us. <laughs> Good thing they ain't coming this week with Miss Marge out of town at that Red Cross training school. Yes. Well, are you sure you've got everything you need, Leroy? Positive. Say, if you're going to be on that train when it leaves, you better get mobilized. Where's your rabbits, Leroy? Out in the hall on that wooden box. The manual training class built it especially for them. Well, they did a bum job, Leroy. That box is full of holes. Yes, holes. Well, that's so the little uh, creatures won't get asphyxiated, Bertie. Yes, it'll help them breathe, too. (laughs) Uh, Shall I call up and get you a taxi? Uh, Taxi? No, thank you, Bertie. 
We can pick up one at the drugstore. If we can't, it'll be the first thing I haven't been able to get at that drugstore. <laughs> Come on, Leroy, let's get going. Okay, Unc. So long, Bertie. Don't let any Japs get you. <laughs> Quit picking on us South Sea folks, Leroy. <laughs> Hey, come on, young man. I'll take the suitcases. You bring that crate of clover crunches. If Marjorie gets back to town before we do, Bertie, you tell her where we went. Yes, sir. I'll tell her that you had to act as a convoy for a bunch of dumb bunnies. And then she'll say... <laughs> Never mind. I know what you say. Goodbye. Bye, Bertie. Bye, Miss Gilsey. Bye, Leroy. I hope we haven't forgotten anything, Uncle Morris. Have you got the tickets? Yeah, the tickets. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, tickets. Oh, wait a minute. I better look to make sure. Yes, here's the envelope. Yo, Great Caesar's ghost. What's wrong, Uncle Mort? Look, here's my letter to Cousin Flora. I must have sent her the railroad tickets. <laughs> oh, now she'll think I want her and that loud husband of hers to come here. Oh, gee, now how are we going to get to Fairview? Does this mean we're not going? Now, wait a minute. Don't rattle me, Leroy. Don't rattle me. Uh, no time to get reservations. Uh, the next train uh, won't get this there in time. Oh, for what a thickhead I turned out to be. Say, so, Uncle, how about driving? Yes, it's driving me. Uh, wait a minute. Driving? Why, of course. Let's get the car. Come on. We can put the rabbits in the rear compartment, load up on gasoline, and beat the train to Fairview. That was a fine suggestion. You're a bright boy, Leroy. (laughs) Gee, I don't know about that, Unc. I just suggested myself out of my first ride on a railroad train. How far is it to the next town, Leroy? Well, according to the sign we passed ten miles ago, it's three miles. If... While according to the map, it's six. If... But according to all the houses around here, we're almost there. If... Thank goodness. I hope the road gets better from here on. So far, it's been terrible. It's had more hairpins than a dime store. And what's more, it's full of charley holes. Don't you mean chuck holes, Uncle Mort? Yes, but this is a road I don't want to become familiar with, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, we haven't hit a straight stretch for hours. That's right. For every mile forward that we go, we travel two from side to side and three up and down. This isn't a road, it's a Laconga line. <laughs> Why, when I think of... Oh! Oh! Ah, we almost went in the ditch that time. Why don't you try driving in the ditch? It might be smoother. Yes. <laughs> Leroy, this is no time to horse around. Well, if there was a horse around, I'd trade it in for this car. <laughs> kind of hungry. Hungry? Well, so am I. Strange how much exercise you can get just bouncing up and down, isn't it? Let's stop and eat at the next stop and eat. It's all right. That place up ahead doesn't look bad. However, we're so far behind schedule, let's just get some sandwiches to eat along the way. Okay. Come on, Leroy. I'm right with you, Unc. Oh, my. And to think if we hadn't mailed those tickets... We'd have been sitting in a comfortable train, counting the telephone poles instead of dodging them. <laughs> yeah. Let's sit here at the counter, eh? Uh, Tired, Uncle Mort? Yeah, just my eyes, Leroy. Funny, I'd swear I was seeing gravy spots in front of them. That's easy, Unc. You're looking at the waiter's apron. Yeah? <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, that's it. Uh, what'll you have, Leroy? A ham sandwich? Yeah, same thing for me, waiter, and we'll take them with us. Say, look, they've got cherry pie, Leroy. Would you care for a slice? No, thanks, Unc. After that road we were on, I couldn't stand anything else with pits in it. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, how long did it take you to drive from Fairview, Mr. Toby? Oh, about seven hours, McGuire. At this rate, I should be in Summerfield by ten o'clock tonight. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, but I couldn't help overhearing that last remark. Uh, don't count on getting to Summerfield by ten o'clock tonight, sir. No, why not? Because these blasted roads are in a blasted condition. Oh, you don't like our roads, eh? And now, McGuire, take it easy. What's wrong with our roads? What is it? And you take it easy, too, mister. Don't get angry at me just because I warned you about that collection of bumpy ruts ahead of you. I accept that as a personal insult, huh? Gee whiz, is it your road? Well, I'm the superintendent of road maintenance for this section, and this is State Highway Commissioner Toby. Yeah? What am I supposed to do? Get out of my hands and knees and bump my head on the floor? What? If you think I'm going to back up and crawl, Commissioner, you're mistaken. I've done all my backing up and crawling for the day on that blankety-blank road of yours this afternoon. Say, I don't like your attitude, and I don't like your highway. <laughs> Looks like it was surveyed through the bottom of a beer bottle. <laughs> yes, and built by a hillbilly with the hiccups. Now, look here, you're doing Mr. McGuire an injustice. Yeah. He and his men have been constructing that road for the past six years. I know that. 
I saw the signs all along the way. Slow men at work. <laughs> well, that's enough. I'm going to hand this guy a face full of fists. Let me yeah, hear them. They're wanting. Uh, oh, here's our sandwiches, Leroy. <laughs> Mister, you're mighty lucky we're in a hurry. Uh, come on, Leroy. Let's stop tearing down the commissioner's highway and start tearing down the commissioner's highway. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm coming. Gee, you certainly told him off, didn't you? Yeah, did you see the look on that guy McGuire's face? Hmm? Ain't you going to finish your stay, Commissioner? No, the mood's gone. I, I might as well get started. Oh, waiter, the check. No, 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 no. Uh, let me pay for it. Oh, no, no. Yes. Well, all right. <laughs> hey, now, waiter, keep the change. Now, Commissioner, don't let that big blimp get your goat. What does a mug like that know about the heartaches of building roads? Yes, you're right, Squire. Hey, I... Thought I parked my car about here. Are you sure? Well, I think so. I remember it was near this truck. It... Oh, uh, here it is, Commissioner. That's strange. Could someone have moved it? Hey, hold on a minute, Mac. That isn't my car. It ain't. It certainly looks like it. Sure, it's same make, same model, same color, but those aren't my official license plates. Yeah, that's right. Oh, now I wonder who could have been so chuckle-headed as to pull a trick like this. <laughs> Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. What do you mean? What are you talking about? That's the name of the bird that owns this car. Here's his registration certificate. Well, we've got to get that car of mine back, McGuire. We've got to send out a police warning over the radio to the highway patrol. Sure, Commissioner. We'll get it back all right. You needn't worry. you get excited. You don't understand. There's been a rock slide on the road near Summerfield in an emergency, and I've got a hundred pounds of explosives in the rear compartment of my car. <laughs> You notice how much more pep the car seems to have now, Leroy? <laughs> I really get a bang out of driving a car with oomph. Yeah, careful of that bunk, bunk. Huh? Yes. Oh, <laughs> quite a bounce, wasn't it? I can't get over how much better the car runs. If it keeps up like this, it'll feel as if we had wings, Leroy. <laughs> Hold on, here comes Kirk. Oh, yeah. Ah. You better go easy on those tires, Unc. Huh? Remember, you can't get any new ones until the FBI investigates you and finds out you're an ambulance or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, these tires are good for thousands of miles yet, Leroy. Oh? Hey, these roads. I hope that didn't hurt any of our little cottontail cuties in the rear there. <laughs> well, I guess they're well padded. <laughs> yeah, I can hear the box bouncing up and down. You can? Maybe I better get it and hold it in my lap. No, no, don't do that. They'll be happier if they don't get a look at this road. Besides... Look out for that red lantern. What red lantern? Oh, that red lantern. Oh. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't see it. A big pile of dirt behind it, Leroy. Well, here's the end of the detour. Now I'm really going to hit it up. At Leroy... Yes, Uncle Mort? I want you to keep a sharp lookout and back. If you see any highway patrol cars with red lights flashing and cops in them, you just nudge me. Understand? Yes, Uncle Mort. Very good. Now, I don't expect to get... Oh, Leroy, don't bump me. That wasn't a bump, Unc. That was a nudge. Nudge? It's, oh, my goodness. Yes, now I can see him. I better stop, eh? I can't imagine what in the world I've done. Well, Uncle Mort, I have an idea. Be quiet, young man. Oh, here they come. Uh, uh, good evening, boys. Good evening, Chief. Chief? Shh, he thinks I'm an Indian. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you, boys? Just stay where you are, sir. We'll have the fire out in a minute. Yes. Fire? Just one of your rear brakes. We need that extinguisher, Mike. Oh. Here you are, Sid. Any button your coat, it's the commissioner. Uh, thanks. Uh, say, uh, what's going on back there, boy? Well, nothing to get excited about, Chief. One of the brakes must have locked. Oh, oh, my goodness. It's lucky you put it out before it got to that box of rabbits. I better look to see how they are, Uncle. Uh, no, Leroy. They're probably sleeping. Let's let sleeping rabbits lie. I don't think any harm was done. You'll just watch your brakes for a ways, Chief. Well, thank you very much, boys. Anytime I can do anything for you, i uh, got a card here someplace. Oh, we know who you are. Oh, you do? Well, I never knew I was that famous. Sure, you're a big man in this state. Sid, he'd be a big man in any state. Yeah. <laughs> well, i got to be getting along now. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Bye. sir. Now, there's a genuine guy, the commissioner. Yeah, don't act no different than you and me. You or I, Sid. Huh. Uh, you know, he's a lot better looking than his pictures do him justice. Yeah. <laughs> but don't you think he's a little fatter? No, not fatter, Sid. Heavier setter. <laughs> <laughs> you see, fatter isn't a respectful way to describe a state commissioner. Yeah, but on him it looks good. 
Well, let's get into the heap and start rolling again. Yeah. Attention all highway patrols. Hey, listen. Be on lookout for large gray sedan, license 4X669. That number's familiar. A state car assigned to Highway Commissioner Toby. Oh, the guy that was just here. Taken from Junction Grill an hour ago by a stout man and a small boy with a black mustache. A small boy? <laughs> a small boy with a black mustache. Hey, that's the guy who... Why, that fat rat... Handle situation with care, boys. Rear end of car is loaded with explosives. Come on, Mike. Let's go get him. Yeah. There they are. Right up ahead. Get closer. Hey, what are you doing? Shooting at the rear tires. Hey, wait a minute. That car's full of explosives. Oh, my gosh. Don't get too close, Mike. Okay, I'll drop back. But what do we do? Say, look at him go. Let's trail him till he slows up. If he slows up before he blows up. Well, we've been making good time, my boy. I thought we'd better stop here in Millville and get some gasoline. Where is that attendant? I think I'll get out and take a look at the rabbits, Uncle Moore. Yeah, that's a good idea. That road was so rough, I bet those hairs stood on end. <laughs> oh, say, Leroy, uh, the police chaps again. All right, stick them up, you two. Yeah, we'll first, you know, stick them up. Oh, hello, boys. Practicing? Get them up quick, fatso. If that's all. Say, what's the idea? You two, get them up. Now, search them, Mike. Yep, here, 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 here. You needn't be so rough. You've broken a couple of my cigars. Well, they haven't got any guns on them, Sid. Okay, you can put down your hands. But don't pull any funny business, you two. What's the meaning of this unwarranted outrage? Hey, get him. Yes. That's what we did, didn't we? You stole the highway commissioner's car and it's loaded with explosives. If, what's this about the commissioner's car? Take a peek at those official license plates. Huh? If... Well, gee, Unc, how did they get there? They were framed. I mean, we were framed, Leroy. <laughs> well, at least there's nothing to this explosive nonsense. You officers can look in the rear compartment and see for yourselves. Okay, take a look, Sid. Uh, sure. <laughs> won't he be surprised, Leroy? Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. You see, it's just rabbits, officer. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Come here, Mike. Does this look like rabbits to you? No, nah, to me it looks like a case of explosives. Well, if you were a rabbit and went through what we've been through, you'd feel like exploding yourself. <laughs> Why don't you come back here and look for yourself? Yes, come on. Let's show these stupid... Oh, my goodness, Leroy. Uncle, what you trembling like that for? Uh, look at that box. A blasting powder. If, whose car is this? Who slipped it to me? How did that dynamite get in there? That's what we aim to find out, brother. Good. Who will we ask? You. It, me? <laughs> yes, come on. Say, where are you taking us? To the Millville police station. You're going to hold a little quiz, kid. Yes, sir. <laughs> there must be a reasonable explanation for all this. Captain, will you telephone our home in Summerfield so that our maid can identify us? Now, just keep your shirt on, Stuffy. If I put in a call a few minutes ago. I bet that's it now. Oh, thank goodness. Bertie will clear this right up, Leroy. Hello. Hello, who's this calling? Uh, long distance from Millville. Oh, I know the answer to that one. It sure is. <laughs> uh, this is the police department. Uh, we're holding a man with a stolen car loaded with explosives. He claims to be uh, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Mr. Gildersleeve ain't in Millville. He done took the train for Fabview today. Oh, he took the train, huh? The train? Ooh, I've got to tell him about that. Let me call you. Get away from this phone. Uh, this man claims he drove this car as far as Junction City. Oh, that can't be. Mr. Gildersleeve's car's resting right here in the garage. Ah. Well, in that case, I was right all along. Uh, sorry I troubled you. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Wait a minute. Well, why did you hang up? Oh, look, you. I've had enough of this. Who do you think you are trying to run things and act so insolent and arrogant? The police? Yeah. Huh? Uh, Mike, put these two in separate cells till morning. Yeah, yeah, what's going on here? Oh, hello, Commissioner Toby. Uh-huh. Well, I recovered your car for you, sir. Yes, I know. Where's the man who took it? Uh, here I am. Uh, hello, Commissioner. <laughs> oh, so it was the little critic of the state highway system, the uh, little road runner down there. Oh. Well, I'm only thankful nothing happened to my car with all that blasting powder in the back. Yes. What do you mean by letting me carry dangerous explosives? Oh, dry up, you big wet blanket. Oh, you ought to be thankful you're getting out of this mess without going to jail. You mean you don't want him held, Commissioner? No, this man just made an innocent mistake. It was stupid, but I don't think it was intentional. Uh, Come on outside, Gildersleeve, and we'll trade cars. Yes, yeah, all right. Hey, good night, Captain. Thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, something he ate, no doubt. 
After you, Commissioner. Come on, Leroy. Say, I better make sure my rabbits are all right. Oh, don't worry. They're safe, my boy. Oh, uh, did you have a look at them? I'll say I did, and they jumped right out of the box and escaped. Escaped? And now, don't worry. We called out a road gang and rounded them all up again. Took the best part of two hours. Gee, I hope nothing happened to them. Now, now, they're all right. None the worse for the little romp. They're in fine condition, all seven of them. Yes. Seven? But, But we only had four rabbits to begin with. Commissioner, you found too many. (laughs) Hello. Hello, operator. Quick, give me the police department. Police? This is 747 Parkside Avenue and something's happened here. Didn't you phone me about a man who said he was Mr. Gillsleeve in a stolen car? Well, some policemen did. Well, anyhow, I went back to bed, and I tossed, and I turned, and I turned, and I... Okay, okay, I'll get to the point. I got up, and I went out to the garage to see if it was there, and it wasn't. No, no, the garage was there all right, but nothing else was. Uh, What do you mean, be more pacific? Oh, well, somebody sneaked in and stole all of Mr. Gilsey's four beautiful, brand-new retreads. Uh, hello, wait a minute, I ain't through yet. At the time these tires were stolen, they was attached to Mr. Gilsey's automobile. Leroy, quit pinching me. What's the big idea? I'm afraid you'll fall asleep. Yes. Well, don't worry. If I want to sleep, I'll pull over to the side of the road. Yeah, but the trouble is you'll pull over after you've fallen asleep. Oh, yes. By George, it's two in the morning. I'd stop right now if it would make us late for that rabbit. What's that noise? It looks like a cop, huh? Uh, not a cop. The police have been on my neck tonight like a muffler. Well, this time they can't find anything wrong. I'm driving under 40. My lights are all right. It's my own car. All right, pull over to the side of the road. Oh, yeah. Pull over, Leroy. Jeepers, I wonder what it is now. It, probably some officer who hadn't heard that everything's been straightened out between Commissioner Toby and me. You know, I'm beginning to be afraid of cops. Oh, poppycock. You watch me handle this fellow. I'll get rid of him inside of two minutes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, two minutes. You can time me, Leroy. <laughs> can't hold us any longer, officer. We've been here for two hours already. Two and a half, Unc. I'm still timing you. <laughs> but look, officer, and you too, Captain. Here, here, Captain. Wake up when I'm talking to you. Huh? What? Who? Oh, uh, you here again? Uh, How many times? No, I'm still here. It's just the second time. How soon are you going to set us free? I can't do anything until we hear this party in Somerville who turned in the stolen car report. When they call, let me talk to them, please. I'd like to get my hands on anybody who says I stole my own automobile. Why, I'll... Uh, Oh, yes. Hello, Millville Police Station. Captain Webster speaking. Are you calling the Gillsleeve residence? I don't know. Uh, did you report a stolen car early in the night? I most certainly did. You catch it? Yes, but the driver claims he's the owner, Gildersleeve. Yeah. That's the second burglar that did that tonight. This is getting monotonous. <laughs> well, uh, he claims that you can identify him. I'm going to put him on. Uh, here you are. Yeah, thank you. No, see here, Bertie. What's the idea of having the police chase me clear across the state? Mr. Gillsby, what you doing in the pokey? Yes, yeah, huh? <laughs> you ought to know you put me in this pokey. Leroy and I took the car instead of the train. Oh, you took it. And I thought it was some of them rubber robbers. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you'd have told me. Yeah, so do I now. We'd have been in a fair view by now if you hadn't had us arrested for stealing our own automobile. Now, you tell the captain here that I'm all right. Uh, here you are, Captain. Yeah. Well, what about this man? Yeah. Oh, that's his car, all right. And he's my employer. At least he was, as of our most recent conversation. I better hang up before he decides to change the status quo and make me a member of the alumni. Well, Gildersleeve, that looks like a clean bill of health for you. I guess you can go now. Oh, thank goodness. Come on, Leroy. It's time we got to... Yeah, take your hands off me. I tell you I didn't steal that car. It's mine. I'm State Highway Commissioner Francis X. Toby. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, we had another guy tonight who was also supposed to be the oh, commissioner. Oh, but that was... Uh, oh, hello there, Captain. Tell this lunkhead who I am. Well, hello, Commissioner. They got you, too, I see. Oh. <laughs> yes, Gildersleeve, for stealing your car. Well... I told this balloon brain I was innocent, but he wouldn't believe me. Not even when we arrived here and I showed him your car. Huh? Well, I parked right next to it and I said, look... I don't it. care. Orders is orders. Uh, Mike, this man is the commissioner, all right. Huh? 
just my luck. <laughs> well, now that everything's straightened out, we better be going. I'll have to drive 70 miles an hour if I'm... Oh, <laughs> I forgot. The speed limit is 50, isn't it? <laughs> well, come on, Leroy, let's go. Where's Leroy? Oh, I'd give a lot right now if I could say, move over, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, this must be it. Let's see, yes. The Fairview Convention Hall, exhibitor's entrance. Yeah, we just made it, too. <laughs> Your passes, please, sir. Your passes? Oh, yes, you have them, I believe, Leroy. Yeah, that's right, Uncle Mort. Uh, here you are, sir. Yeah, just one second till I open the envelope, please. Yeah, it's Porter, I guess. I'm sorry, folks, but these here appears to be the wrong kind of tickets. Uh, let me see. Oh, suffering whales, Leroy. These are our railroad tickets. What? <laughs> I've had them, and, and we could have come by train all the time. Yeah. Well, then what did we send to Cousin Flora? The rabbit show passes, I guess. <laughs> well, at least we're here anyway. Yeah, that's true. What do we do about getting in, though? I'll arrange it. Hey, Porter, if you'll help us with this box of rabbits... Yes, I'll be glad to. Yeah, you bring the box in. That You'll, you'll find it in the rear compartment, and we'll, we'll go and find the manager. Uh, gladly, sir, yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 huh? Uh, What's the matter? Can't you budge him? Here, let me help you. Oh, my gosh, Leroy. Danger, explosives. It's the commissioner's car again. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now... I'm sure most of you homemakers realize the importance of energy-producing foods to your whole family. We're all working hard and playing hard these days, and the energy we use up must be replaced by the foods we eat. So you should know that parquet margarine, the delicious modern margarine made by Kraft, is one of the best energy foods you can serve. Yes, the wholesome, nourishing American vegetable oil that goes into parquet margarine is one of the best sources of food energy there is. Now, that's particularly important in the wintertime. The food energy in Parquet helps give you body warmth, too. Helps protect you from the cold. And equally important, every pound of Parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A, making it a dependable food source of this important vitamin the year round. So, use plenty of Parquet margarine at the table and for cooking, too. Yes, the delicate appetizing flavor that makes Parquet so delicious for table use makes it a real flavor shortening for baking. Grand for pan frying, too. So, tomorrow, sure, order delicious, economical parquet margarine. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. think Cousin Flora will be home when relatives come to visit. What do we do now, Uncle Oh, Mark? we'll kill time till dinner, then come back and see if they're home yet. If, what would you like to do, Leroy? Well, how about seeing a movie? We passed a swell one on the way out here. A movie? Is that so? What's the title? Look Who's Laughing. Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> well, it's playing all over these days, isn't it? All right, let's go. Sounds very amusing. If, if, who's in it? Oh, uh, Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, anybody else? Yeah, Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen. Is that all? Oh, no, there's Mrs. Uppington and Harlow Wilcox and Lucille Ball. Well, well, yes, yes. Go on, Leroy. Oh, I almost forgot. And Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's laughing. Yeah, good night, folks. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>